Okay, welcome everybody. Let's do some revision on indirect taxes. We're going to take a look at what the effect of an indirect tax is on the supply and demand conditions in the market, and then make a distinction between a specific tax and an ad valorem tax before looking at the importance of elasticity of demand in determining who actually pays an indirect tax. So indirect taxes are nearly always in the news in some shape or form, be it the uh, proposals perhaps to change the rate of VAT, which is currently 20% in the UK, our standard rate. Perhaps the introduction of a plastic bag, cha plastic bag charge to address the issues of environmental damage. Uh, the, the level of duty paid by car users and by the road haulage sector. Duties on wines and beers and spirits and on tobacco. And of course the proposal uh, scheduled to come in in 2018 to bring in a sugar tax on high sugar content drinks. So indirect taxes are certainly in the news uh, most, most of the time. Let's spend a few minutes looking at what the effect of an indirect tax is on the market. So here is our initial market. The equilibrium is at price P1 and quantity Q1. If we introduce a specific tax into the market, then the supply curve will shift up and the amount of the tax, S1 plus tax, is shown by the vertical distance the vertical distance between the two supply curves. Well, the main effect of a tax, of course, is to cause an increase in price. In this case, after the tax, the new equilibrium price increases to P2, and the quantity, in this case, falls from Q1 to Q2. Now, notice here that the demand curve for this product has been drawn as relatively, relatively price elastic. And one of the consequences of that is that the price won't increase by the full amount of the tax. The total amount of the tax is shown by the vertical distance P2, P3. But the price in the market has only increased from P1 to P2. So we say that the burden of the tax falling on the consumer is shown by this green shaded area. And that tax burden is always the difference between the original price P1 and the new price P2. The rest of the tax is paid for by the supplier, and that's shown in this diagram by the orange shaded area. And you can see, hopefully, that when demand is price elastic, when demand is price elastic, the majority of the tax burden is paid by the supplier. They have to absorb the tax, perhaps in the form of a, of a lower profit margin. The consumer is only paying a small bit of the tax. So if the coefficient of price elasticity of demand is greater than one, in other words, if demand is elastic, then most of the tax, most of the tax is paid for by the supplier. Now let's contrast that. Here's a diagram showing where demand is more inelastic. And you can see here that in this case, the green area, the amount of tax paid by the consumer, which remember is the increase in price, the green area is significantly bigger than the orange area. In other words, most of the tax burden, given the vertical tax per unit, is be, has been shifted by the supplier onto the consumer. The amount the supplier has to absorb is just the area P1, P3, multiplied by quantity Q2. So, when the elasticity of demand is less than 1, in other words, when demand is relatively inelastic, then most of a tax will be absorbed or paid for by the consumer supplier is able to pass on the majority of the tax. And uh, the importance of elasticity, I think, should be shown by, by this slide. In extreme cases, the demand curve might be perfectly inelastic. In other words, the price elasticity is zero. In this case, again, we, we add a tax to the market, S1 plus tax. And again, in this example, the, the tax is, in, is passed on in total to the consumer. The price rises from P1 to P2. So in this case, all of the tax is paid by the consumer. In the um, next example, there is a perfectly elastic, a total, uh, perfectly elastic supply curve. Now, in the perfectly elastic supply curve, again, it doesn't matter what the elasticity of demand is, then all of the tax will be paid for by the consumer. All the tax is paid for by the consumer. So the market price must rise by the full amount of the tax. We've looked in our examples at a specific tax. 
There is another type of tax called an ad volorum tax, which is a percentage of the unit cost of supplying the product. Let's take an example, VAT. So VAT at 20%, if every good can be supplied for £50, we add 20% on, £10, to lift it to £60. A product that costs £400 to supply, well, we add 20% VAT, that will be now 470 We have to add £70 to the, uh, to the product instead of the extra 10 in beforehand. So with an ad volorum tax, the actual absolute amount of the tax will go up as the market price increases. And this causes the supply curve to pivot. Can you see here that when we add a tax, uh, the supply curve, the amount of the tax will be greater at higher prices. So there's a pivotal upward shift in the supply curve. VAT is a good example. Another one in the UK is insurance premium tax, uh, banded at two rates, 9.5% and 20%. That applies to things like travel insurance, appliance insurance for things like your washing machine or your dishwasher, and some forms of car insurance. Lots more revision notes and revision quizzes on indirect taxes on our website, gcgu.net forward slash economics. Thanks for joining in this revision video on indirect taxes.